Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 34 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up a database system so you'll be able to access a database using Java. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do, because you're going to have to get the Java database connectivity driver, you're going to have to go to mysql.com forward slash products forward slash connector. And then you're going to scroll down here and look for JDBC driver for mysql, and I'm using mysql, more specifically known as connector J. And then you're going to click on download. Then you're going to see this screen right here. And then more than likely, you're going to want to get this zip archive. And you want to click download on that as well. Whenever you download that, you're going to get this folder right here. And this is the part that's important. I'm going to show you how to set up everything using Eclipse. And actually in a couple different ways. And then I'm actually going to show you another way to set this up using PC. I'm going to show you three different ways to set this up. Basically what you need to do is you need to copy this right here. It's MySQL Connector Java. And it's a JAR file. And then on a Macintosh, what you're going to need to do is go into System, Library. And then look for Java. And then go for Extensions. And then you need to paste that in inside of there. See, here it is. That's it. You're done. Eclipse will automatically update and allow you to access the database. So that's how you do it with a Mac. Like I said, there's 50 million different ways of doing this. You could also, inside of Eclipse, just come over here where you have your files that you have saved in Eclipse, your Java files, and you want to go to Build Path, Configure Build Path. Then Java Build Path is highlighted. You want to click on Libraries, and then you can go Add External Jars. And if you can't see this, you can view a full screen and see everything. And then you just point at this guy right here, which is MySQL dash connector dash Java blah 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 dot jar. And all of this code is available underneath the video. And you hit Open, and that's it. Now everything's going to be available to you, and you could actually scroll down here. And if you went to JRE System Library, one of these jar files is going to be MySQL connector dash Java. Now I'm going to provide a link to an SQL tutorial that I did in the past. Now in the next part of this tutorial, I am going to cover some SQL, of course, to show you how to work with statements and so forth, but this other tutorial is a lot more verbose. I'm going to type in MySQL5 dash user mysql admin and this is probably going to be different for you and there you are i'm logged into mysql now if i wanted to use a specific database inside of here well i could go show databases and there you are there's a whole bunch of databases and let's say i want to use customer that's right here i just say use customer okay i got all that but i could go show tables there you are, and there's customer. And actually, one of the queries that I'm going to run is going to be select first name from customer. Like that, and there's those first names. It's a very, very simple query. And like I said, we're going to get more complicated in the future. But at this point, I'm just going to pretty much stay right there. So there I showed you multiple different ways to load that. Like I said, you could also add this Java database connectivity driver to your path if you're on a PC or if you're on a Mac or whatever. Now let's just get in here and actually start using it. So if you want to access the API that's going to provide you the ability to process data stored in the database, you're going to need to import a library. And that library is going to be java.sql.star. There you are. Got that library inside of there. And then inside of main, I'm going to go connection, c-o-n-n -N equals null. And a connection object is just used to provide access to the database. Real simple. Then I'm going to come in here and create a try block because we want to catch any potential exceptions. Then I'm going to go class dot for name. And for name dynamically loads a class for you. And in this situation, the class we're going to use is com.mysql.jdbc.driver. And there you go. And then I'm going to take this connection that I have. And I'm going to go driver manager. And driver manager is used to handle a set of different JDBC drivers for you. And I'm going to go get connection. Don't worry about memorizing all this stuff. Like I said, just copy and paste the code and play with it. Eventually you'll get it. Get connection is going to establish a connection to a very specific database. In our situation, we're going to type in JDBC colon mysql colon two forward slashes local host forward slash customer because I'm going to use that customer database. And then I need to provide my user ID. And there it is. And then I also have to provide a password, which there you go. I just provided that password. Then what we have to do, we have to start preparing to send our statement, which is going to be our query. So SQL state is what I'm going to name this. And a statement object just executes SQL queries. And queries are just questions that you ask the database. And then we need to go con dot create statement like that. And create statement returns a statement object for you to be able to start querying the database. 
Then we have to actually create our query, and I'm gonna call this select stuff, and it's just gonna be a string. I'm gonna go select first name from customer. Remember that? And I actually queried the MySQL database earlier, so you already know what the results are gonna be for that. And then I need to create a result set, which is gonna contain a table of data that's gonna represent the results of our query. And we just go SQL state dot execute query select stuff is the query that we're going to be performing. It's very important to understand that whenever you get the results from this query, those results cannot be changed and you can only read those results in one direction, which means from the beginning to the end. That's it. And you're going to use a while loop to iterate through those results. So we're going to go rows and you use a method called next to iterate through all the different results. And then in this situation, I'm just going to go system out print line rows dot get strings and return the value for whatever the column's name and in this situation it's going to be first name and then what do i need to do i need to catch any of the different exceptions that might be fired so let's just give myself a little space here and i'm going to go catch sql exception call this ex and then we can actually get a whole lot of information in regards to this exception but i'm just going to show you two I'm going to do SQL exception. Of course, make sure this is in quotes. And I'm going to go EX get message. And get message is going to return a string that's just going to describe whatever the error was. And to save myself some time, I'm also going to go vendor error and get error code. And this is going to kick out a vendor specific error. Like I said, you don't need to worry about all these different things. You'll learn them as this tutorial progresses. And then I also want to catch a class not found exception e and in this situation i'm just going to go print stack trace and if you wanted to know why that exception is in there it actually catches this if it cannot find that class and then if we execute this you're going to say that i've connected to the database and there you are there's your results like I said, underneath the video, there's all the code. It's heavily, heavily commented and also provides some information on setting up class paths inside of PCs. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.